Hello and welcome as today's, today's date comes in that of Monday, the fourth day of May 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. We're all bets, trades, and of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. Within the Litecoin versus that of the uh, US fiat currency, we can see how on April 23rd it resisted this line and then supporting it before it's lift off. The 43.53 is just an approximate number. It was resisting it here as well. It resisted it here. It resisted it here as well. And it got above it April the 7th, April 6th. And then we got this line up here at 64. And again, that's not the exact number. That's just the approximate at 64. And uh, we just even scroll. Let's just change it to the daily chart because I'm going to show all the data in here. These lines represent Fibonacci from these highs of around near 400 and the lows near 22. As I quickly uh, drew them up to the highs at 365. So we have 43 is a 23.6% retracement, uh, $64 in the area of a uh, 38.2 and a buck and a quarter and at that is 61.8 it's got to get it's got to hold and stay above that for a significant period of time a significant break above 125 for it to uh state that this is a failed breakdown in this breakdown situation after it had its first attempt and boy was it an amazing one because it went straight up with very little in the, in the means of correcting this in here being the biggest of the bunch. Well, it retraced 61.8% in one stand, one move, which was phenomenal. But thereafter that, it had its retracement and pretty much matching low for the most part, as we can see with the most recent one. And now we're in a situation where it's going to be able to hold and go through a longer sustained correction. This thing can ride and go higher at any time. And this could be a top area where we could just like plow lower because crypto's it's an interesting game. I think long term, this, or long term, when I say for one major move higher, that this thing get above this and at least have some sort of decent price above four, it has a good chance of doing it. And that's when I say long term because 10 years, 20 years, I have no idea the likelihood of how cryptocurrencies are going to fare out. And then if it does, which ones will or which ones will not? Okay. So where we look at this now key levels of resistance moving forward 64 and that of 125 now against bitcoin not looking so well as it's uh, 0 0.0052 0 0.0053 whatever but still uh at about 500,000 satoshi as uh, it's pretty much had a fall of near 30 percent that's just from the highs here in march and then if we look at this uh, even further We've had these prices up at like 0.17. So now we're at the stage of losing over 3x. And a lot of cryptos can be uh, in stages where they uh, are losing uh, decent amounts against Bitcoin. And the rallies Bitcoin has had. Well, during this time frame in here, Bitcoin, well, the, I mean, I know it looks terrible, but there has been no Bitcoin sustained rally. For last time, right around 2016, to the early parts of 2019, well, the end of 2017, uh, rather. Yeah, so 2016 and 17, Bitcoin was good. And then when Bitcoin has another sustained gain, will these altcoins perform in any type of mechanism like before? Meaning, oh, Bitcoin goes up seven times, or even better yet, less than two times. Let's say 60%, 50%. And yet other altcoins are up 2x, 3x, 5x. Oh, yeah, when Bitcoin's up seven times. Other coins are up 20, 40, 80 times against the dollar to their maximum peaks. We'll see if that becomes a commonality. Now, not every altcoin has stuff like this in a bearish setup. As I'm going to talk about Theta later on against uh, Bitcoin here, which is in at 16.12, having a nice little run. But uh, before we do that, let's take a look at Bitcoin against the dollar and go through a quick uh, turbo multiple time frame session here long term is longest term to relatively short monthly chart as a, a market that has had very good run up sideways but a little bit of down correction up it's been completely sideways down a bit going below the band above the band albeit barely and it's, it's been firm in this ever since it entered it pretty much at resistance at september of 2019 and just a long sideways reaction it's got to break at one side or another if it breaks to the upside we're talking about another leg higher 
to the downside, it's first serious correction on this longer term because it hasn't sustained much price action below the 18 average of lows. On the weekly chart, we see again more of this sideways, see, see the sideways consolidation after its top. It, uh, it established a big level of support, big plunge lower, which it never really has came down to this point. This level of support was the resistance in here. So it's just, And it wasn't that long we were down towards those prices. And just a phenomenally good rally to get above. And it's been staying and holding above this, this general area here, which was just, oh my goodness, like around 6,400. Since it's gotten above it basically a year ago, it's holding and staying above that point. Now we had the opportunity in here to get above it, but it didn't break out. Big fall, but how it's recaptured this so far, really keeping this in a very neutral state now in this range between 67. And it's tough to call resistance because first we have 13.6, then we have 12.7, then 11.5, and then we have these two peaks. So we've had a lot of these lower highs. This high matches with the one before. So that's the high that we looked, are looking to approach, which is around 10,500. On the daily chart, this price action has really been interesting because I talked about this, how, ooh, I, how it's just holding this low volatility on these gains and doing the same sort of deal here. I really, really like how it's uh, the, the setup of this is as we are moving forward on the triple hour term time frame. This move just showing a lot of the sideways action and which is which it has had and then finally on the single hour term um, yeah, not much more else to say about it because uh, we firmly have 85.50 as support so until it breaks that that is of course that's going to be above it and same sort of deal with resistance this high and then what, what what high do we go with but we've we look at the 18 for attempts to get this thing going it had this attempt here succeed correctionary wise but not really and then it barely got above it here, not to sustain really much. And now it's even starting to get back to that. It's just in this sideways manner, we can see it's been holding above 85. So one key the resistance level here at a high $9,000 area. And then again at about a high 9,400 or a little bit under 9,500. Now let's move on to altcoins, theta, starting off in the weekly term time frame. And coming on to Binance, it started off fading down. This rally attempt uh, was one day, November the 30th. It held for a few hours, but that was about it. This one was a several week rally, as we can see, getting above here. And not really holding this area, but at the same point, really not breaking down from this previous low at about 1200. A little bit frustrating in the sense I wanted to buy big at 700, can't do it, but. I've actually done well just trading this against back and forth against other coins and lately because this has been much better against most coins I've been doing a lot of selling with this as I trade this against so many other different pairings is one of my favorite coins to hold. On the daily term time frame we've uh, gotten above this level of resistance and since it got above it here on April 22nd it is nothing but held and stayed above it with a continuous nice run of higher highs and higher lo lows. And the buyers right now at least in control of this market three hour term i really do like to see how well we just this little move in here from these lows on may the first from the start of the start of the month keeps on chugging up nice and down up and down movements this high to this low and just these little moves if you trade them back and forth very interesting i'm going to show such on the 15 minute term time frame on that i'm not doing it but i'm just saying if you did this is just a lot of opportunities that's the thing about this crypto game. Find what you can what you can do to do it well, and uh, the, there's a lot of ways to profit well on it. Anyway, it comes from this 1500 level, and we've had a lot of this resistance established here at the 16, low change to 16 and a third, over 16 and a quarter anyway is big resistance. We managed to come down the 18 average of lows starting at 20 hours last night, supporting the 18 lows very, very well for several periods. And then the breakout this morning on the 11 o'clock time stamp, and I like how it's been holding so far in the highs last period before. Uh, just completing a good pause period at the highs and with 44 minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the three hour period I like how it is holding that as far as the 15 minute term time frame we can uh, see that it's uh, got some interesting moves this is why I want to bring it up because if you want to trade this 
just by putting orders in. Make sure the price is higher. Assuming you get into theta right in here. And all you're going to do is you're putting in, you're playing micro stakes as far as volatility. Because 15 minute time frame on what these numbers are. But even within it, with uh, good al with smart allocation rates, all you're going to be putting buy orders in here. And then you sell up here. All of this would be sold. But then you look at situations like this. You can sell and then you can buy back. These types of moves. Sell and then buy back. Sell, buy back. Sell, buy back. Now everything you've sold in here now if you're in this game hasn't been bought back yet because of all of this consolidation. All you can do is play from this low right now to this high continuous buybacks. This range has got a differential of price from like, and it's not even, well, 1607 to 1630. And even really at 1625 has been the high. So you're talking about a little over 1% uh, volatility over the last uh, few hours. And if that's your cup of tea or you know how to play those small percentage games, especially because there's low uh, trading fees, then there's just several ways that can be uh, bound towards it. But when I talk about these moves, I want to talk about this towards a longer scale. Because again, this rally, it ultimately failed. But I mean, it came back. This one failed. This one failed. This rally here, failing. But... In the daily chart, that's been the story with Theta the whole time. Like just all of these little moves in here. Even this little rally failed. This little rally failed. Um, this little rally here failed. And so for me, when I go and do this, it's I, I have these situations. These trades before were just so minutely small. But when you have a market that goes from 1,000 up to like 1,186. So that was a move of like 18, 20%. Like, not great, but it did mean that maybe I'd sell, a little, and I probably did sell a bit of theta near these highs, and then I'd buy it back. And when this day happened in here, this was a situation where you look, okay, you broke a key level below the 18 like this, below this major key support. I mean, there was all of this support that was going on, and it didn't break down any much further after this point. Okay, I didn't mean to draw that line in. But it's obviously held and stayed above that ever since as this uh, rally has maintained. And the recent supports that this market has had will be supported a lot in this general area, which of course was resisted here. And this level of resist or support, it, uh, I guess you could say it coincided with this level of resistance, but I guess even if you look at it from this level of support here, uh, this was from previous resistance. Either way, we're in a situation where it's been holding for quite some time. Resistance was established here, which was higher than these levels. That it wasn't able to hold and stay above in here, but it did have, one, a higher shot, a higher price point that it hit, which was a little uh, south of 1800, or a little under it. But this hit, this hit, many more hits. Then we've had this hit with a pullback. Now what it's at least starting to do is hold and stay above this because if into, well, with if this is 7.19 p.m. as I'm doing this, there is only, well, yeah, 40 minutes left in the session. This is nice to see it have a day where its lows are doing what it's doing. Really, even yesterday's session, same thing, although it did have a low of 14.94. Well, this might be the first day that it is held above 1,500 and, well, what's the low, 14.98? Or 50 at 15.35. When's the last day we've had a low higher than that? We'd have to go probably way back into in here. Yeah, that would be uh, June, June 13th of last year is the last day uh, in Satoshi price. That theta's low has been, uh, well, in the high level. So showing me good signs. And if it's able to get the above these level of resistance... Because it kind of coincides with that. And that's where I want to say it's key. Kind of coincides. Number one, maybe we keep upgrading it. So we go up to like 18, 1900, close to 2000, and thus barely break this, barely break that, and then continue the choppiness. That's a possibility. But anytime these things are ready to go, and I don't know when, they can go off and it can be like, wow, mind boggling. And there's two, and, there's, and it's in these charts, the two key ways it can do it. One is very fast, which was this one. And in order to trade this, you had to have your orders in. Or you just had to be there at the time and have your theta ready to sell at these higher peak prices. Of course, getting the buyback. Here you had multiple days 
in which you were able to sell along the way and then it gave it all back but that meant for ratio trading or just trading theta against anything against the dollar against bitcoin against whatever that you whatever you were selling you were able to buy back at cheaper prices even if you were selling here at like 48 and then buying it back here at like 3000 and then you're what you sold at like 39 you bought back at 23 or whatever just even 26 whatever you're able to get some good gains but this thing was breaking out january 24th it broke out above 1800 on february the 4th it had its very very first big gain 24 percent day on february the 25th and that was near the end of the move up to march 11th and that's a key thing of note the biggest moves some people state happen at the end of a key cycle run so from point a low to point b high well this was the largest point of the run and within it this date here was 37 percent so the biggest day up day was its final day on the or the top day okay now let's move on to dgb which is not on binance and i've always wondered what happens if dgb goes to binance what would uh the price would just go up high i would think and I'm, right now it's been doing that and this order is pretty much dead i just have not been uh i would i've had a couple of moves i've missed within it but that's fine i'm looking to just trade this as it needs to be done meaning if this goes up i'm going to uh sell if this goes down I'm gonna buy back I've already managed my risk reward for what I do for myself risk reward management is always job number one and I've calculated that 380 is a key level and I'm thinking if I can have some sort of very very fast move do I take a chance I think the answer is yes where I find a way to partition a 100% sale at that level that's not gonna stop me from selling if it goes to 260 270 or different areas on the way but it means when it gets to 380 whatever I have left in my wallet for DGB I'm gonna send it all to the exchange and sell it all if I'm wrong and DGB does one of these oh my goodness things then that's gonna happen but as long as it goes there relatively in a straight up kind of move and the alternate coins of other coins don't show any great bullish action and I don't see that right now yet that I'd be confident why that's important for me is because if this goes up to 380 and then I'm starting to see all other altcoins starting to make a big bull market move. Then I'm going to be more apt to think that a move like this might happen. Or at least a move going up like more basis points higher. Maybe to the four figures 1000 level. After all these coins are going to move wildly up and down. But of course the strategy for me is in the and the hope well, more than anything. Is that this will manage to. Uh, and I'm going to remove these lines because they're irrelevant now. But go up to 380 and then hopefully well if it goes to four or five hundred whatever or four well, 440 or 500 area whatever but then come back down and then i can strategically work my buybacks as uh, need be because with all these cryptos it's just so common that i've always seen this happen like i'm gonna get the drawing to a this happens pullback a lot of these big pull, these big rallies do ultimately fail. But how many people thought in here, oh, this is at 500, it's up too much, and then yada, yada. Now, if they did, if you sold here and bought back somewhere in here, you technically can get a winning trade still. But even as it goes, as you can see, that it's always risk-reward management for how one plays their game. And finally, Tezos. I'm going to show that. And almost like I'm, play, I'm playing the Psychics coins to a degree because Theta was one of those one by Miss White Dove. Talked about on the JSNIP4 channel pretty much right after the release. And then this is uh, Samantha Jane talking, one of her favorite coins seemed to be Tezos. So when it was on the market here and she was talking about it back on these first few days, I'm like, how do I just not get into it? And then as it was going sideways in here, I was let's go more aggressive and I'm glad that I have as this thing has been making a nice pattern of higher highs and higher lows this uh, test of this previous high has been just that retested on it this previous low was hit very a lot well above a Fibonacci at 22 that's unfortunate for me because I was kind of hoping it was going to come down there and I would have a bigger more buys ready to go it, it is what it was as it was and now you got this high to this low correcting so far so good but you can say oh no it's breaking down below the uh, 18 average of lows when, and then I can go the three day and say yeah it's also correcting within the rising three days 18 average of highs and the lows coming in crossing the Fibonacci mark here at like 2828 um, we'll see I mean when these things go off and these things are ready to go what potential does this have I think 
Um, and I, I don't know much about the fundamentals, but a lot of it, pretty much you can say, goes in one ear out the other because I've never gotten the whole point of a lot, like why one coin is so much better than the other or for the whole purpose of them. I mean, you really, uh, the whole cryptocurrencies, it's not, they're not like fiat currencies in a sense. They are kind of made out of thin air to a degree, but I mean, it's got an awesome ledger and it does work for payments and, well, transparency for a lot of these, at least the non, uh, most of the coins, the uh, non-private coins, I guess, is right in play. I love the idea of it. And if people want to buy cryptos, which is why back, way back when, which was like 2016 into 17, I finally made the decision to be thinking, yeah, cryptocurrencies is something that uh, should be, I think, uh, a good play. And, of course, I talk a little about the trading strategies. In the more information box, I've got the 2019 video links that I made, how I do ratio trading. I think they're very good reference points if you're looking to learn. Uh, but as it goes, I feel having cryptocurrencies, having precious metals, and fiat currency all available to you is magnificent. I can... I, I, I look at if I have to pay any type of bill to somebody in any type of way, oh, I can pay you cash. And if you want paid in cryptos, which one do you want? Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. I, even if I don't call the Ethereum, I can still pay it to you. Just have to buy it and send it to you. It'd be just like sending a Bitcoin or which other coin. Just buy it on an exchange and send it to you. Easy to do. All you want are silver. Oh, I've got lots of different silver coins. Any specific kind you're looking for, I'll just grab what I want to sell. You know what? That's... Uh, part of the business game and then oh you want uh, uh, paper rectangles or fiat currency but I think we are moving into a stage of a monstrous uh, monetary reshaping re collapsing period a major economic collapse if you will I think I noticed that another way of putting it is people with uh, might have been referred to to whom as that of sheep Back in 2008, 2009, 2010, like a decade ago, are now calling other people sheep. Because in the times that have went by, especially over the last many months now, I'm reading a lot of the comments on Prime Minister Trudeau's videos today. And it's and that was the one based on vaccines. And that's an interesting uh, topic on itself. Uh, I haven't really commented on that. Uh, I'm definitely not pro-vaccine. Probably I'm quite the opposite. But more and more people are uh, finding out, like, okay, this uh, is probably not a good idea. And then this whole Bill Gates, there's a lot of Bill Gates. Um, just, you can call it just, uh, what's the best word? Like, conveniently, maybe you could use it just as ironically in the situation. But if you want to know more, to that, more about that, uh, uh, James Corbett report, I like to follow that for those situations. Uh, I like the things he's been talking about. I've been subscribed to him since like early 2010s. So for close to 10 years. Uh, also as well, silver uh, for silver and gold and economic stuff, Mike Maloney. Uh, you can do a search for Mike Maloney on YouTube if you're not familiar with whom he is. Uh, but he puts up a lot of good information. A lot of the charts that I like and I uh, that he puts up, he puts up much better than I could. So uh, just watch those videos for that kind of information too. And for me... Um, that's how it goes. I live on the pool of, pool of uh, how one of a Glenn Jacobs or that known as known as uh, Kane in the WWE as a character. With uh, it's like Austrian economics and free will. I mean, do you know I like the life idea that do whatever it is that you want to do, as long as you're not doing any unwanted harm to somebody else. It's everything's great, and let the business cycle work the same way too. And there's been just a lot of interference with what's been going on that this next stage that we're going through is uh, most likely uh, not going to be the most prettiest that we have. But I think as hum human society, if uh, there, it might be an interesting battle between uh, anti and pro vaccine uh, people. Maybe uh, if, for example, well, I'm not going to get too much into it, but if there's a lot of people anti-vaccine then that'll be just an interesting sight to see how that plays out uh within our world and that's going to be like like pretty much months away anyway thank you for tuning in because for me baseball season is back i've already got notes that i've made for today whole bunch of statistics on baseball players korean baseball uh, actually i did find stats on this guy and he ain't a rookie he's like a 20-year veteran he's massive okay pitcher 
So for me, I'm doing fantasy baseball, and it's fun. It's actually a mechanism to get uh, safe income. Safe income is in it. It's almost like um, long term. It's like guaranteed. But as long as sports play, it's always going to be there. Now it's been two months for me. Close to is March, uh, March 12th was the last day in which I had fantasy sports. I played fantasy baseball, and I did very well. But that was Major League Baseball spring training. And I and they have been talking about spring training coming back like mid June to late June, which is like June fifteenth to thirty. So spring training would be like May twenty eighth. I'm weeks away. So for weeks and weeks and weeks, one o'clock in the morning, there's Korean baseball. Probably it'll be bet on as high as it's ever been because there's going to be many millions of extra dollars betted in from America, from the Americans because there's nothing else to bet on. And I guess I'm part of that crowd. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.